Hello and welcome to the basic of Flask for Beginners course. In this video, we're going to compare Flask with other popular Python frameworks and see why Flask has become one of the most preferred choices for developers around the world. First, let's compare Flask with Django, one of the most popular Python frameworks. While both frameworks are widely used for web development, they have significant differences in terms of their approach to web development. Django provides a complete framework that includes an ORM, an administrative interface, and a full set of tools for developing and deploying web applications. This makes it great for larger and more complex projects, but it can also lead to unnecessary overhead for smaller projects. Flask, on the other hand, takes a minimalist approach and provides only the core components necessary for web development. This makes it great for small to medium-sized projects and allows for more flexibility and customization. Next, let's compare Flask with other popular Python frameworks such as Pyramid, Tornado, and FastAPI. Pyramid is another full-stack framework similar to Django, but with a focus on flexibility and customization. It allows developers to choose the components they want to use, making it a good choice for projects of all sizes. Tornado is a high-performance framework that is well-suited for real-time applications and long polling services. While it's not as feature-rich as Django or Pyramid, it provides excellent performance and is great for projects that require fast response times. FastAPI is a modern and high-performance framework that has gained a lot of popularity in recent years. It provides fast request handling and is well-suited for modern web development, such as APIs and machine learning projects. So, as we've seen, each of these frameworks has its own strengths and weaknesses, and the best one for you will depend on your specific needs and project requirements. Flask provides a great balance of simplicity and functionality, making it a great choice for many web development projects. That's it for this video. I hope you found it informative. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know in the comments below. And, if you liked the video, don't forget to like and subscribe.